Hello everybody. The um, purpose of this video is to show you how to um, generally reduce incredibly large numbers of um, Excel data into something that's a bit more usable, something that's more filtered and controlled. So this um, especially applies to the material students uh, in engineering, but also generally anyone who wants to um, cut down a large sample of Excel data. Um, so I have here some 31,155 data points um, and I want to plot a graph with these. Obviously I don't want to put all of those points into Excel at once. So um, I'm going to show you how you can um, sort of filter that down a bit. And the trick really is um, this command in Excel which is called indirect. Um, and so it tells you right there what it does. returns the reference specified by a text string. So to give you an example, we've got data kept in the cell B2 here. If I ask Excel for the data um, in the text string B2, then you'll see that we are indirectly referencing that cell. Okay, um, so that's how at least that command works. How are we going to use it to filter out this data? Um, well, we're going to need um, a, a slightly more complicated process than just that. I'm going to make um, one row, which is just numbers. And this is just simply numbers um, that are going to equal the number of data points I want in my uh, graph. So let's say I, I want a total of 50 data points overall. I'm going to consider. Okay, um, the next thing that we want is uh, we want to pick um, not every first and second, but we want to pick sort of every um, tenth or tenth and twentieth and thirtieth sort of um, data point. Um, so we're going to need also um, a multiplier that we're going to um, multiply by our numbers in order to get um, a new row point and we're also going to need a starting point. So I'm going to put my start to 1 at the moment and my multiplier to 1 also just so you can see how this is going to sort of work. Um, and in this column there becomes the number of rows. So what I need to do for this column is take the, the um, numbers uh, column, multiply by the multiplier, and add on the start. Of course when I drag this down I don't want multiplier and start to move so I want to put the dollar signs in there. Remembering you can hit F4 in Excel to quickly put those dollar signs in to make sure the cell won't move. So I'm going to even start at 0 and drag it down. So now you'll see that I could um, decide to start my data from point 10, I could decide to start my data from point 15, and I could go up in increments of 10 or 100 or whatever it happened to be. So this is going to be useful later for honing in that data. Okay, um, now we need Excel to um, give us a cell number. And so if we want to read data from um, particular uh, column, say we're going to get, we, we're not interested in, in the time column, we want the force column and the stroke column. We're going to get both of these pieces of data um, out. So this might be um, force cell and stroke cell. My force cell is going to be equal to, um, in, in this top corner of the, of the screen here you can see B5 is the name of the cell I currently have selected. So all of the cells in this um, uh, column are going to have the B prefix and then the number of the row just comes after. So I want to join together my number here with um, the text string B, B for the column. And to do that we use a different Excel function called concatenate. Which, as you can see the description there it joins several text strings together. So we want to concatenate B with 115. Now we have B 115. I can drag this down. So now I'll be able to reference these cells a little bit later. And again if I change any of these um, values you see that my uh, reference cell also changes. I want basically the same thing in the stroke cell except that I want to use the this, uh, column C. Uh, 
Okay, so now I've got my reference points. I can actually get my um, intention, which is the force and stroke data. So I had a few rows to go through, but now I'll be able to retrieve my force and stroke data. So the force that we're going to get here is um, using the indirect function and referencing the cell force cell. So I can drag those items out. I can also just drag this across because my um, stroke cell will now reference stroke cell. So I'm looking into cell C150 in order to get that information out. And I can drag that down. Alright, I now no longer need this. I can hide those, move them across a bit. And I don't really need this column either. All I really want to look at is my force and stroke data. So I'm going to plot a graph of this so we can see sort of what's going on. Uh, so we want a scatter plot. Um, what sort of plot will I use? Possibly this one. And we want to grab our data. X data is going to be um, stroke. And Y data is going to be force. I won't show you how to do um, stress and strain in this one, you'll have to figure that out from the other video. So from now I'm just going to plot force and stroke, it'll have the same shape of the, the diagram. Um, now the trick, the thing to do is to fiddle around with these um, numbers of multiplier and start until you get the um, shape of the diagram or as much of the diagram as you are interested in. So we basically want to see the whole of the diagram up until fracture. We can uh, move the start number so that we end up with um, cutting off, we want to cut off that uh, initial sort of difference. Um, and you'll see also if I'm starting at, at uh, 1500 here, then my um, my force value, my stroke values, uh, particularly stroke is probably the, the big issue here, um, it's going to start at some distance which is um, away from zero on the graph. So that's just because the machine, when we've started up the, um, uh, the tensile tester, it's begun to pull the sample apart um, but there's been some slippage in the teeth or there's been some just general movement in the um, in the device that has enabled stroke to take place without much force. So we want to kind of eliminate that. Uh, I want to do that for stroke. Um, I want to take away the stroke that I have initially from the stroke I have at any given point. So we're going to be measuring relative stroke. So see this is now zeroed and that will be zero but everything after that point will shift back to its um, uh, its desired value. So I can drag these down and we've, we've now zeroed the stroke. So that's that's nice, it looks slightly better. So we still need to kind of hone in on um, the starting point. <laughs> that looks silly. Um, <laughs> we want to try and find uh, where exactly this is going to begin. So that's the third or fourth data point along there. That's so 1, 2, 3, 4, 10 or so. Maybe we want to go to 2000. Too far. Anyway, it takes a bit of practice, but you can eventually you'll zoom in on the, the right starting point, and then you'll be able to find um, the remaining shape of the diagram. I probably should mention as well, so that for this first one, um, we don't actually want the f this first cell to um, take into account the multiplier. We want the start cell to actually just be start and then every cell after that should take on um, the product of uh, the number cell and the multiplier cell like that okay so now we'll be able to actually fine-tune our starting position so that we can get rid of that little lip on the front of the diagram and eventually if you find the right spot the diagram will start from the spot that it should do. Um, okay, so from this point after you've got, as I said, your force and stroke data um, you basically just need to consider the material thickness in order to work out your um, stress values and stroke divided by um, length will get you your strain values. So then instead of plotting force extension you'll actually be able to plot stress strain. See, if you pick a multiplier that's too high, you'll peg back to um, zero. So 
550 seems to be about the limit <clears throat> when I'm going up to 2900 in my cell reference. Okay, so that's the main the main gist of this is to use that indirect function and the concatenate function um, in order to refine the data as has been shown. I hope that's been um, helpful and that you'll all be able to use that to produce the force extension, uh, sorry, uh, stress strain diagrams needed for the assignment. Alright, thanks for watching.